Hello and welcome back to another episode. Now today I want to talk a little bit about a book that I've very much been enjoying over the past few days and that is Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Crossover Volume 1. Now this this comic book collaboration was first announced back in 2015 at the San Diego Comic Con in IDW Publishing's panel and had I been in the audience back then my reaction to this news would have been probably twofold and very very fast very quick I, I initially probably would have had a very highly raised eyebrow sort of hmm Batman and the turtles mm, not sure not sure followed by the realization of exactly which turtles we're talking about and the fact that all of these guys are ninjas Batman is a ninja, he's a multi-martial arts expert who's been fighting the League of Shadows for ages. That's really cool. Versus or collaborating with Ninja Turtles, whose master is a, a rat ninja master, who's been fighting the Foot Clan, a group of ninjas, whose head is Shredder, another ninja master, and the fact that we're not talking about the cartoon turtles. The turtles who I grew up with, for example. Here in the UK, we had the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles cartoon. They were sort of rebranded because of violent associations. And that was really the turtles that most of us were exposed to, really. The Cowabunga, the Goofy Shredder, the sort of um, slightly silly, but nonetheless really cool Turtles cartoon. For example, I love the character of Metalhead. He's on the shelf just behind me. But crucially, we're not talking about those turtles. We're talking about the comic book turtles, whose origins are in those black and white, hard-edged, cool ninja stories, where Shredder is actually quite scary. He's not the, the slightly... Uh, bumbling fool that he is in the cartoons uh, and 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 the current run of IDW Turtles comics sort of merges that that sort of hard-edged with a little bit of the cartoon and out comes something which is actually very pleasing so the idea of Batman meeting those guys is irresistible to me and immediately I want to know more and that, that was more or less my response when I first came across this concept a couple of months ago in a local comic book store I saw it on the shelf and decided to save up and buy a copy and I do not regret it for a moment. This volume brings together a six month run of comics that was released in six issues. The story written by James Tenion and the art by Freddie Williams and I'll come back to the art in just a moment but it's clear that the story writer and the artist had tremendous fun when it came to the merging and the blending of these two universes. Uh, I, I don't want to spoil really anything about the story here. I mean, often I, I would give maybe a little beginning taster of the story and then some key character moments out of context, but this story really does deserve to be read from cold, as it were. Uh, but but it's it's so obvious that, that the set pieces and the, the potential of certain characters meeting was was a delight for the people involved. The story is well thought out and the potential for the most part is delivered on. Uh, Batman's first exposure to, the, to these new people, to the Foot Clan and the Turtles, is as a new crime wave with potential metahumans maybe even helping out these criminals. Uh, Shredder stands as a, uh, a harsh and, and brutal in some respects, criticism of Batman's scary image. Shredder, in some respects, is more scary than Batman, and, and that's an interesting contrast to have. You have the turtles very much out of their element in Gotham, but also in a familiar realm when it comes to, for example, the Gotham sewers and some of the characters that they might bump into in the Gotham sewers. Uh, you definitely have the ninja potential delivered on in this story. Batman and the turtles, when they first come uh, come come up against each other, communicate in the way that ninjas might. They 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 fight, and in fact, Leonardo in particular is able to discern that Batman is fighting like a detective, not going for the killer blow, but rather trying to understand his opponents. The story progresses in a very pleasing way, with a momentum and an immediacy that is all character driven. Uh, the turtle's response, for example, to first meeting the Batman is exactly what you would think it would be. Raphael, for example, is deeply concerned about this, this vigilante and actually later on in the story goes on to, to really question Batman's sanity, uh, whereas Michelangelo thinks it's really cool that this guy's 
going around the city like a dark avenger as michelangelo would uh, splinter's character as a as a master is reinforced even getting to sort of outmaneuver batman in some respects and, and, in, and in other ways for example the bad guys have a similar character driven reaction shredder for example is is astonished that gotham doesn't have a solid underworld it, it, rather the underworld that he finds is fragmented and fractured between the big you know players in the rogues gallery people like the penguin joker and so on he wants to build an empire it really is clear that the the writer and the artist are having a huge amount of fun bringing the best of these worlds together uh, that there are references to Jeremiah Arkham. Jim Gordon turns up in the story. So does Alfred. And, and indeed, Alfred's, Alfred's reaction to the teenage mutant ninja turtles is wonderful. Alfred hasn't had a teenager in the house for quite a while. And of course, some of the turtles can't resist uh, exploring, shall we say. Now, crucially, when you do a comic book crossover, it's a risk. It may be a complete disaster. One comic may eclipse the other, or worse still, they sort of dilute each other and become a bland, disappointing mess. And I can think of a couple of, of crossovers that I've been less than satisfied with. And in particular, when it comes to the Turtles and Batman, it's not so much that the story might be bad. Both DC and IDW know how to treat their characters. But rather, they highlight each other's comic bookiness when they're next to each other. Batman is a serious man in his world, and for example, Raphael is a very serious turtle man in his world. But next to each other, you cannot help but be reminded, potentially, that both of them are fictional characters. Whereas actually, they handle that very well. A key part of the story is about how the turtles mutated to become what they are today. Even in their own world, they are anomalies. And so, with that acknowledged, they kind of work in Gotham, and I'm really happy about that. That was the biggest concern I had, that these two worlds couldn't coexist without becoming less, but actually they managed to become more. Pleasingly, this augmentation not only applies to the plot points and how the story unfolds, but also uh, some key themes that, that, that marry up quite nicely. One of them being, for example, family. Bruce Wayne, Batman, is obviously a character defined by his loss of family and his search for a surrogate family. The turtles are defined by how close their family is, even though it's made up of a rat and four turtles and a human being and, uh, and a reporter or two. Uh, but but uh, they don't want to lose that family. And in that sense, that there's some nice common ground found in this story. I really appreciated that. I also when it came to these two worlds coming together, appreciated the opportunity for certain observations to be to be made on behalf of the audience. So for example, when it comes to the pronunciation of Ra's al Ghul, which I've always said, Ra's al Ghul, even though I've heard it pronounced Ra's al Ghul, for example, in the Arkham uh, City game, uh, I've been confused. Is it Ra's, is it Ra's? And in this story, we have Leonardo say, who is this racial ghoul? <laughs> Finally, telling me at least, as, as a comic book fan, how it should be pronounced. Clearly, Leonardo is hearing Raish al Ghul, not Raz al Ghul. So, nice little sort of offshoots, little sparks from the, from the fusion of these worlds are happening all over the place. Clearly, a key part in this fusion of worlds is the art style. And Freddie Williams does a fantastic job here. Uh, the, the, the turtles are just about dark and brooding enough to be in Gotham, and Gotham just about raises its colour palette enough to be part of the Turtles' world. The two do meet in the middle, and, and neither suffer because of it. And this is potentially helped along by Freddie Williams' technique. He is a, an artist who very much extols the virtue of, of a combination of traditional art techniques and also digital uh, digital, digital methods and, and medium. And so the, the art has a sort of a, a resonance, I think, that, that that reflects all of that. It reflects 
the old and the new, it reflects the dark and the light, and it reflects the, the different techniques that the artist is using. And uh, it, it, it's all brilliant. I particularly like the design of the Batmobile in this story as well. It's a design that I haven't seen, certainly in other comics, and maybe that's just because I haven't read some of the newer comics yet, uh, but I really, really appreciate it. So there you have it, Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 1. I love it, I really do. And uh, if you haven't already given this a go, I strongly recommend picking up a copy. Now, I know I haven't given you as much story, even for a spoiler-free review, as I normally would for a comic book or a graphic novel, but I really think this warrants going in as cold as possible. I mean, obviously beyond knowing that the Turtles and Batman are in it if you see what I mean. Um, it, it does warrant that. And I guess as the, as the test, gauge yourself how, how interested you are. If you're genuinely interested or excited at the premise of Batman and the Turtles in the same world, then it delivers. If you're intrigued, but you're not sure, then maybe hold off a little bit. And uh, the, the price will obviously come down as time goes on. I got my copy for £14.99. And so maybe wait until it suits your wallet if you're not entirely sure. But if you are interested, dive in. It's a lot of fun. At the moment, in fact, Volume 2 is currently being released in its sequential monthly format. And when it comes out as a collected volume, I'll be picking that up as well. I don't know anything about that story, except that Bane goes to the world of the Turtles. That's cool. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a it's a mashup, it's a it's a, a comic book event and it delivered as far as I'm concerned. As ever guys, until next time, do take care. Bye bye.